Hi, in this video I want to talk about DNA melting temperature and 2 plus 4 rule of thumb. And it's very important to know how to calculate melting temperature uh, of the DNA or in particular for oligars or primers because uh, it's uh, used in uh, so many applications like for example in PCR, in uh, microarrays and in uh, uh, genome sequencing. So it's much easier to uh, name techniques where, it, where it's not used than uh, those techniques where it's uh, uh, used. So uh, it's just example how uh, this technique is important and I will talk today about the most uh, uh, basic formula for calculation. This just would be the base for your understanding how this whole process works and you would be uh, able later uh, easily to learn more sophisticated formulas. So, uh, for example, if I take a PCR process in order to show you and use it uh, as example in this explanation and we design a primer here in order to build a second strand. So this is single uh, stranded DNA and we design it primer and now we build second strand and this would grow in this direction and that means that this is five prime end and three prime end of the um, alligator and here also going to be three prime end and you also should know that Mm, DNA strand always grow from the 5 to 3 direction and the second strand of the DNA should be complementary but uh, it should be in different direction so here is going to be 5 prime end and 3 prime end so in order uh, of course this whole process of uh, uh, building of new strand wouldn't uh, go by itself and uh, we also need tRNAs and we need uh, polymerase and bases for bases so uh, when we raise the temperature these two DNA strands would separate and now we have two single stranded uh, DNA and in order to build a new, new strand of DNA for each of the uh, old strands of DNA we need second primer so here goes our primer that I show in example above and here we need uh, to design a new primer and this primer uh, should be different from the primer in our first example because this is going to be a uh, different strand of DNA and of course uh, sequence of this strand of DNA should be different from this strand of DNA so primer that would be attached itself to this end would be different from the primer uh, on this end of the second uh, strand of DNA and the sequence should be different and what it also means that uh, one strand might be uh, rich for example at uh, A and T's and another may be more rich with C and G's and uh, of course this cycle second cycle uh, would uh, produce two more strands and uh, with each cycle this is uh, going to be exponential process uh, uh, we would double uh, quantity of the DNA and uh, of course we have in abundance uh, all the primers we begin with uh, 
millions and uh, millions of primers of these two kinds uh, in our solution. So we have uh, plenty of them for all the cycles. So uh, now returning to these two primers that we have here, for example, uh, we can call this primer number one and this number two. And let's assume that, um, for example, primer number two is more rich with uh, AT bases. And we know that AT bases has uh, uh, A and T pair uh, has two hydrogen bonds and C and G has uh, three hydrogen bonds. So this is obvious that this bond would be stronger than AT. Uh, so, uh, for example, we have in uh, primer number two uh, more C and Gs and if we design these two primers with uh, equal number of the bases that means that uh, temperature of melting would be higher for the primer 2 than uh, for the primer uh, 1 that has the uh, same quantity of uh, base pairs or bases but uh, uh, have least hydrogen bonds and in order for our process to go uh, smoothly we have to balance these two uh, temperatures of melting for these two primers and we can do it by uh, uh, changing number of the bases in each uh, primer. So uh, in order to calculate our temperature of melting we use formula that is called 2 plus 4 rule of thumb and uh, this is very basic simple formula that is temperature of melting is equal to 4 uh, for GC, G plus C, plus 2, A plus T. So if I take uh, just random sequence, for example, A, T, C, G, A, T, A, T, a, A, C, G, uh, G, C. For example, and uh, now I just have to count uh, how many uh, base, base pairs we have and what kind of base pairs, how many hydrogen bonds. And uh, we have, uh, we don't need to build a second strand of DNA as long as we know that this is A and uh, A has uh, two hydrogen bonds and uh, T also pairs with A and has two hydrogen bonds. We just have to count how many A and T's we have and uh, C and G's of course. So for example here we have a G and C and we need to find how many G and C we have on, on this uh, single-stranded uh, DNA or oligo. So uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have uh, six nucleotides here and now we have to count uh, how many A and T's we have and we have one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight, and we have eight here. So now we have to multiply four by six. We have twenty-four here, and two by eight. We have sixteen here. So together we have uh, forty. So this is uh, 
we calculated melting temperature for this particular sequence that is 40 degrees of Celsius and uh, also I want to mention that when uh, uh, we talk about uh, DNA melting temperature it doesn't mean a change in uh, state of matter or uh, just like for example with uh, uh, ice that turns in water uh, it change it uh, aggregate uh, state but here we are when we talk about DNA melting temperature we're talking about uh, point when in our solution we have 50% uh, of the uh, DNA present in double stranded form and 50% present in single stranded form. So this is uh, called melting temperature of DNA. So hopefully uh, you were able to learn something new today. Thank you for attention. Please subscribe to my new videos. Goodbye.